Hey everyone, it's Matt and welcome back to the channel. We have a lot to cover today. In terms of Life by You, we have some news from April 26th and we also have some brand new news, brand new information coming in. I believe something came in yesterday and then we now have something brand new today. So we are going to just cover all of this in one fell swoop. But on April 26th, Life by You tweets, hello everyone, we have an important blog post for you today about life stages. So be sure to read it here. Be sure to ask your follow-up questions below Below, and we might answer them in future blogs, videos, or around our social media channels, which they actually did end up doing, I believe, yesterday. They actually answered some more questions that future players had about life stages. So before anything, we are going to dive into this blog post, but we have another look here at a room in Life by You. We've received a lot of questions about which life stages will be available in Life by You, both at early access and full release as well as how those life stages will impact gameplay, how your characters will age, and more. So let's address some of these and bring you the latest on where we are in the dev cycle. Also, I want to make it known, I have yet to read this. I don't even know what's on this blog post. So this is kind of a first time reaction and I'm sure I will have some opinions too as we get through this here. What life stages will be available for early access? Teens, adults, and elders are targeted to be available at the start of early access. We are still hard at work to determine if children will be available at the start of early access. This will depend on how development of child visuals and bug fixing goes over the next few months. Wow, I'm kind of surprised. I don't know. I was just assuming that we would get like most or all of the life stages in early access at least, and maybe they would just limit some of the other game features, you know? I'm kind of surprised by this. I'm not like upset about it. I'm just kind of thrown back with this. If that's what they have to do to make sure that they're getting a good stable version of this game, out for early access, then I don't see a problem with that. I think that's good on their part, but just a little shocked is all. We have already created content for children and also feel that the gameplay is rewarding. However, we need time to bring visual charm and make sure that this life stage is working properly. And honestly, I'm okay with that. At the end of the day, we want them to launch something that is either perfect or near perfect. We want it to be the highest quality possible because as they go into early access, they are really sharing their first impression of the game with the world. You don't want a bad first impression. First impressions are very, very important. So if they feel like they need to exclude children in order to give off the best impression, maybe they're not fully polished, then I say do that. That's fine. So I can totally see where they're coming from and I can understand that. Infants and toddlers will be included in the base game eventually and we have designed our systems with them in mind. Both have been prototyped and play tested in development, but need additional polish and design to reach what we consider to be an exception acceptable quality bar for gameplay depth and visuals. The team strongly believes that these life stages are important to the player experience and absolutely belong in the base game in order for the game to be considered feature complete. We will continue to update you on a timeline for these life stages as they develop. Well, that's nice. They have a quality standard bar for what, you know, should be in the base game in order for the game to be and I quote, feature complete. <laughs> I'm sorry, I hate to make Sims comparisons here, but we all know The Sims 4 when that launched was definitely not feature complete. So I admire the quality bar that they have set here for the base game. So they want to make sure it is the best base game possible. Here's another thing that I want to know too after listening to this. So when's the actual game coming out? If early access is starting towards the end of the year this year, but there's still a lot that they're keeping from that that's going to be in the full version, when's the full version going to release? Do you think they're going to have early access out for a while like could it be like a six month plus thing or maybe even a year i kind of assumed we weren't getting the full game until next year but now i'm starting to think what if we aren't getting the full game until quarter four of 2024 that would kind of be a little long but also that gives them a lot of time to make changes and fix bugs and work out kinks and all of that stuff so i mean if that's what it takes and that's what it takes but i'm just curious as to how long the early access period will be until the full version comes. What life stages will be eventually included in the base game? Infant, toddler, child, teen, adult, elder will all be included in the base game eventually. 
How will aging work? Is it gradual or in stages? Right now aging follows the progression of in-game time and each human will have a birthday every year and go up one year in age. I love that so much. That is something that I've been wanting in Life Sims since like forever. Like we all know the way that it works in The Sims has always worked the way that it works in The Sims since forever. They've actually never had like an actual birthday where they increase one year at a time because years aren't really modern in The Sims, but it's like real time, I guess, in a way is going to be modeled in this game. There's going to be dates and time and every year they age up one year. I love that. I love that. It's just going to provide such a different perspective. You know, this is going to be so different from The Sims. I think that's why I am as excited for it as I am. I'm all for new gameplay and new experiences and things we haven't ever seen in life simulation, you know? Visuals and animations are tied to life stages themselves and will update when a new life stage is achieved. We are still fine tuning the visuals across all of the life stages in the game right now. We can't wait to see what you think of aging, so this is a major area where we will be watching player feedback during early access. Oh, and you know that they will. Okay, so I'm guessing to summarize here, your human is going to get a birthday every year, but they say that visuals and animations are tied to life stages themselves and will update when a new life stage is achieved and they've confirmed that the life stages are infant, toddler, child, teen, adult, and elder. So you're only going to get new visuals and animations during these one, two, three, four, five, six life stages that are in the game, but your human can still have a birthday every year even though maybe they're still a toddler or still a child or still a teen between multiple birthdays. If that makes sense, which I like. So in a way, it kind of works like The Sims, but also in a way it kind of doesn't at the same time. In The Sims, you don't have that. The only time your Sim has a birthday is when they go from infant to toddler or from toddler to child or child to teen, etc. There are no birthdays for every year in between the life stages if you happen to spend multiple years in between them because it doesn't work like that, you know? So there is some variation coming with this. That is so exciting. All right, let's continue. Continue. What will be the unique elements to each life stage? Is school a thing for kids slash teens? We are still adding lots of content to the game between now and early access and will continue to add content throughout the early access process. This includes adding a lot more life stage specific content. Find some specific elements to each life stage below. Okay, so they're going to be adding things while the early access period is happening, which I think is really cool because that gives them the opportunity to introduce things little by little and things be tested and they can tweak things individually instead of just loading the early access with everything and then being overwhelmed with feedback. That's very smart on their part. Interactions right now we are working on making sure interactions are age appropriate to the life stages capabilities. The types of interactions a child versus an adult or elder will differ. Our system lets us select for which life stages or combination of life stages an interaction appears. For example, only teens and older will be able to cook the full range of recipes. We want to make sure they're careful around sharp objects and open flames. Conversations There will be conversation options and content related specifically to each life stage. Getting unique life stage content was very important to us in developing conversations and age-specific content will be expanded throughout early access to add more variety and specific cases. For example, the way kids speak is age-appropriate and unique to a kid's interests. There are also conversations related specifically to child and parent guardian relationships in the game. That makes sense too. You're not going to see kids talking about bills and being stressed out about life. You know, those interactions are going to be specific to the age range. School versus jobs. Only adults can go to work and perform jobs slash careers. There are plans for a children's school to be added eventually and will likely follow a similar gameplay system to jobs not be a rabbit hole. Wow, so they have plans to add a functional, actual, active school. Kind of similar to how jobs go, which in Life By You, you can actually go to your job and see them work. There's no rabbit hole for that. So that is really cool. That's something to be excited about. University gameplay is not currently planned for the base game as it's a deep topic with a lot of design implications for the game. We want to make sure we have a solution for this specific case. I'm kind of not 
not surprised about that. I feel like if they're going to give us DLC, which they probably will, because if you know Paradox, they got DLC too, just like EA. I feel like EA will always be worse with it, but Paradox does have the whole DLC thing. So we'll probably get university and college as a DLC at some point. I could definitely see that. I'm not sure what else they could include as a DLC, but that's one that I could definitely see coming sometime in the future. Transportation. There are age appropriate transportation options for children, teens, and adults onwards. This includes tricycles, bikes, and skateboards for kids to get around with cars unlocking at an older age. Yes, and we better be able to teach them how to drive. We better be able to teach them how to drive. They can get a license and all of that stuff. Yeah, I can see them like aging up and they can instantly drive, but learning how to drive should be a necessity. That should be something that is required. But still, it's cool that like kids have tricycles, bikes, and skateboards to use to get around. So even they have their own transportation methods. The tricycles, that's so cute. That is, that's gonna be so cute. All right. Dating and relationships dating will unlock specifically between teens at the teen life stage and specifically between adults at the adult life stage. The options and tone of dating differs from teenage sweethearts to adult dating, marriage and romantic relationships. This includes custom conversation options and content for those life stages. Okay, so we learned a lot here, guys. We learned a lot. We learned about more specific transportation options. I don't remember hearing about tricycles before, so I guess that's new, at least new to me. A little bit more with dating and relationships between the life stages and how it's going to differ between teens and adults, which is something that I expected. Active schools hopefully being implemented sometime in the future, along with the active jobs, which we already know are a part of this. Interactions and conversations, those were kind of a given things that I expected, but the graduate ages and the years and birthdays that's something that I'm really really excited about as well so up next here this was actually 19 hours ago so yes it was yesterday they've tweeted we received some amazing questions about life stages so this is after that post that I read so here are some answers to your commonly asked questions are life stages affected by age if so at which ages do the life stages change this is a great question yes right now life stages are determined by specific age ranges. We want to make sure that these ranges feel right, so no specific ages to share yet. Stay tuned. Okay, I can understand that, and I'm okay with them not sharing any information on that yet, but I'm just happy to know that there is ranges, but you'll probably have birthdays for each of those years in that set range, you know, kind of like the article said. So that's exactly what I expected. Are there any plans to add preteens, tweens, or more elderly stages, additional life stages are definitely something we would consider. However, we're currently focusing on making sure that the life stages we do have are fulfilling and interesting to play. Another good response. I am one of those people. Okay, I know I'm I might get some flack for this. I am like an anti preteen. I think they're pointless. Give us what preteens would have with the teens and with the children. I think that you don't even need a preteen stage. I feel like it's just pointless, at least to me. If you disagree, explain why in the comments. But I just I feel like preteen Teens are so pointless. That gameplay that would be for preteens could definitely be given to either teens or kids or both teens and kids, you know? And I definitely agree with their response here that they're going to focus on what they have now before adding, but who knows, maybe in the future they could expand more on preteens. How fast does time pass? And how long does a day of time take? At normal speed, one minute of game is equal to one second of real time, which I'm pretty sure is how it works in The Sims. So so some similarities there. A day can range in time depending on how you play. We have time options which allow you to skip forward, fast forward, and pause at any time like The Sims. We want to make sure our time solutions work for many different play styles and look forward to covering time later. So they have more on that. I wonder if it's going to differ from The Sims, but as of right now, I guess it seems like it's going to be the same because in The Sims, one minute of game time is one second of real time, but that's if you're on speed one. Obviously, they explain here that there are speed controls. So if you fast forward, then that's going to, of course, then speed the process up. All right. Now that we are done with the questions, we actually have something new that came in three hours ago from roommates to families to populating an entire town. We want to show you how household management works in life by you. Learn more about how household management works from senior game designer Gabriel here. So they actually have a YouTube video. What's up, everybody? This is Gabriel, your friendly neighborhood game designer. We've been getting a lot of questions about household management, 
head, how it works. So you know what? Let me show you. So quick note, a lot of what I'm about to show you is still in development and will likely change based off of the feedback and the ideas that you have. So don't be shy. Let us know what's on your mind. We're listening. So this is the household management screen. This is where you can add characters to your household. You can choose the type of vehicle they drive, where they live, as well as the job they're going to have. From here, you can also access the character creator, but that's going to be a video for another time. If I want to add a character to my household, all I have to do is click the add new button. From here, I can select the type of character I want to add. I can also save add partner, add sibling, add housemate, add parent, add teenager, add child, add baby. Pretty cool. Also, there's a lot going on here but like not in a bad way you can create a woman man and non-binary oh they definitely have the lead over sims there i honestly i don't see a way that they're going to be able to implement that with the sims 4 i honestly feel like we're gonna have to wait until the sims 5 for that just because they would kind of have to redo the foundation of the game in order to implement that you know so life by you definitely has the edge over ea at least in that department you can choose their attraction body shape personality i love the little personality bubbles too like you can see that this one human here family secret genius charming snobby troublemaker foodie and goofy you can choose their business job title their home furniture and he even mentioned that you can even choose their transportation method in here as well which is so cool adding a character from the character library is simple all i have to do is select the character click them and then hit add i have history with daffy so i'm gonna add her to my name and here she is so I've chosen to play as Daffy, but let's say I want to save her out so that I can bring her into another game. The textures of the fireplace look a little fuzzy. <laughs> I don't know why that's just, this is the first thing that I noticed guys. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, it's as simple as clicking pause and clicking save to character library. Now, the cool thing about this is that I can save out multiple instances of Daffy. So if I want to save her out as a teenager or as an adult, I can do that and bring in the exact copy of Daffy that I want into my game. If I want to bring in a character from the character library, well, it's as simple as clicking add from character library. From here, I can select any of the number of characters that I've saved and bring them into my world. And as you can see, the version of Daffy that we saved earlier is here. I think I'm going to bring in my good friend Coleman and add him to my game. So I'm just going to click on him and click select home. This will take us to the home select screen. Now, you might notice that this screen is a little blurry, but don't worry, we're working on it. These are just the beautiful imperfections of the game development process at work. All right, back to Coleman. So let's say I want to bring him into my household. It's truly giving Sims 3 though, doesn't it? Like with the way we have a full map view and we can kind of see everything, like you can see all the homes, you can see shops and businesses and all of that stuff. It's giving me that same Sims 3 feeling when you know when you're on map view. I'm getting so excited. I want to play this now. Oh, I don't want to wait. All I have to do is select them and then drag them in. That's cool. But let's say I don't necessarily want to add him to this. This household. Maybe I want to add them to another household. Well, I can do that too. I just have to find another house, select it, and then drag them into that one. What's cool about this is that I can also rearrange the characters in this household if I want to. The choice is yours. Once I'm happy with where Coleman is situated, all I have to do is click move in and I'm back to play. So here's our good friend Coleman. And as you can see, so you can do all of that without having to even exit your game mode. Like you don't have to go to, I guess in Sims 3, you could do that, but you'd have to go to edit town. And in the Sims Sims 4, you could do that, but you'd have to go to like the world manager, right? Or the main menu. You can just do all of this while still being in your game. That's so easy. I love that. That's really cool. He's nicely situated in his new household. But if I want to switch back to Daffy, I can easily do that and resume control of playing as her, as well as any of the members of this household, uh, and then switch back to Coleman. So yes, you can play multiple characters in multiple households. I can even take control of any of these characters in this household or anyone in the world. You're really not restricted. And uh, I hope this gives you a level of freedom to be able to tell your own stories and really have some fun. That was just a quick glimpse of what is possible when it comes to arranging the households in your game. I look forward to sharing with you more in the future, but until then, be kind, always unwind, and let us know what's on your mind. I like 
that little bit at the end. That's cute. I also really like this still. That's beautiful. This shot of the houses and the little garden gnomes you can see in the front. Look at them. <laughs> They're just chilling like villains. I love it. Let me know what you guys think so far of all the new information, the life stages, the Q&A, and now how to manage a household. We've got some cool new information on Life by You. Have your opinions changed? Are you liking it more? Are you liking it less? Do you plan on buying? Have you pre-ordered or do you want to? Let me know below. That's all that I have for you guys. Of course, if there's any new information, I'll be back as soon as possible. I love you guys. Take care. And at this point, I might as well just say happy life simming, you know? I don't know what else I'm going to say at this point because we're covering so many life sims on this channel. But um, take care, everyone. Happy life simming.